Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Thank you for listening and being a part of Seeking the Kingdom. God willing, we plan to have a new episode for you every Friday morning. We pray that by listening to these sermons, your faith would increase and that we would grow together as one in the body of Christ. God bless. Semi Prowl of Pastor, Pastor Johnny from Charlotte, North Carolina. I hear he's doing a beautiful job there in the anointing. Yes, amen. I could all of Sukar Buchi Lesa. May God give him strength to go on ahead. Amari Buchi sit at Karazles Leski Jubli and the Hujimos. It's a tough job. It's a tough road. But we can do it, because greater is he who is in them than he that is in this world. Manglimta karabal is a kanao pro, tanela minge swunto warba le debleski. Pastor John, come on up here. God bless you, Pastor. How are you speaking? Thank you so much. God bless you. What a privilege and an honor it is, Mordell. Serve you. Thank the Lord. Amen. Who's excited to be in the house of God today? Amen. The Bible says, let us rejoice when they said to us, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's an exciting time to be in God's house because for a long time, Nasam in Kako, but Naise Devles because Sai Mayek Data Avasa do Kudle Devleski, I Luvudize Devlesko Anav. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for Pastor Bob and his church and his staff for the warm welcome. Uh, Pastor has been someone that I always looked up to. He's a wonderful man. He's an anointed man of God. Uh, he done so much work on the Romania Mascari Kangaria. He's an icon to the churches of the Romania. And he's an inspiration to me, Pastor. I want you to know that. He's an inspiration to me because I grew up listening to his messages, his CDs, his songs, and he encouraged me to continue to serve the Lord. When I was discouraged, discouraged as a young man growing up on choir, serving God as a pastor's son, his music, his words encouraged me to keep pressing forward. In glory be to God. Because the seed that he has sown without he even knowing it is coming to fruitation right here in his very own church. Because he planted a seed in my life without him even realizing it. And I am here today to glorify the name of God and thank the Lord for our model pastor, Pastor Rooney. He's a wonderful man of God. Amen. Try. I just some and word about that the Lord has pressed on my heart to share with you because we're living in a time and a day that we need to hold on to the word of God. We need to stand firm on the Devleski Wodaba and the Pachaimoskai Sermon and the Christo. Because we're living in a day of age where we see that the seasons are coming that Sutta Villa Maro Cristo Palaski Kangari, Amen. And we need to be ready and prepared to the Casa Maro Del, Amen. Hari Wugi Samen. Father, we come before you, Ajes Mogodil. Das to Barimos, Das to Nais Mogodil. Father, your word is already so anointed, so blessed. For it is the very breath of the Holy Spirit. So Devla Akana Bushaftu that you would anoint your servant, that I would share your word boldly and correctly, that not one word would come from myself, but every word I speak, let it be inspired by the power of your Holy Spirit. Take over my vocabulary, my train of thought, and my motor skills. 
Pour into me, God, that I would pour into your people. Stir up the gift within me that it would spring forth like a living well, O oh God. Father, on my own, I cannot do nothing. But under your anointing, I can reach the hearts of every person that is willing to listen to my voice. So Lord, I ask you right now that you would anoint your servant, anoint my voice, anoint my mind, God, that I would be able to touch the hearts of every person in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The title of the message tonight is a living in the promises of God. How many of us here tonight want to live in the promises of God's word? To live in the abundance, to live in the blessings, to live in the things that God has spoken into our lives, into our families through his word. Tonight, before I show you the promises that God has given to us, which are so many, there's so many promises that God has given us through his word, but I picked out a few that we can apply to our lives on a daily basis. That we can be able to stand on these words when we're going through a trial and a tribulation, when we're going through something in our lives, this word can remind us of the God that we serve. First, I want to share with you about our faithful God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Dixomotol. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hallelujah. Right here, the book of Hebrews is declaring that the words that God has spoken through the Bible, through his Holy Spirit, through his disciples, through his prophets, through the patriarchs, that every word he's spoken and every promise that he has given, he is faithful to fulfill in your life. Hallelujah. Adixo Penelo Del, he said, let us hold fast to the confession. Let us hold fast to our declaration. Let us hold fast to our, our salvation that God has given us through the hope of Jesus Christ. What does the word hold mean? In the, in the Amplified Version, it says, let us seize the confession of our hope. Let us seize. What does this mean? It means to grab hold of. In the Greek, it means to capture. What are we capturing? Well, first we need to know what does the word hope mean? The word hope means expectation. So we need to grab hold of the expectation that we have in Jesus. See, everyone here, we may go through a trial. We may go through a tribulation. We may go through something in our lives. But what God is telling us, that no matter what you face, no matter what you endure, no matter what mountain you may come to, you need to seize the promises of God. Because he who promised them is faithful to fulfill them. Because the Bible declares that even when we are not faithful, he is faithful because he cannot deny himself. God is faithful even when we make mistakes, even when we mess up, even when we fall short, even when we don't do what's right, even when we stumble. God is there to lift us up, pick us up, dust us off, clean us up, and set us back on the right path of righteousness. Hallelujah. This is the promises that God has given to us. We need to retain it. The word retain means to keep something in place. That means that we got to keep the expectation of our salvation at the center of our lives. The Bible says, fix your eyes on Jesus for he is the author and the pioneer of your faith. It's when we take our eyes off of Jesus and get distracted by the things of the world that the enemy is able to come in. And lead us in a different path. 
Watch this. The word waver, wavering, it means to become weaker, undecided, between two opinions or a course of action. So the The enemy wants to distract you with the problems in your life. The enemy wants to distract you with the situations in your life. The enemy wants to distract you with naswalimos, with, with stress, with worry, with fear, with doubt, with unbelief, that you would waver in and out of your decision of serving God. That you would waver in and out of the course of life that God has set out before you. The Bible says this. He says, above all, guard your heart, for out of it flows the course of your life. That means whatever is in your heart will determine the course of life that you live. If the word of God is in your life, then you will walk a life of God's promises, of God's blessings, and God's anointing. But see, the enemy wants us to be distracted. When we face problems in our life, we need to grab hold of our hope, our expectation we have in God instead of walking away and giving up. Why is it that Christians make it so easy for the enemy to give up the promises that God has given to you? Because see, the enemy cannot rob you of God's promises. He don't have that power. But he can distract us to get us to give up on the promises that God has spoken to our lives he can get us to waver he can get us to become undecided he can get our faith to shake and the bible says this that if you act something in faith don't waver because a man who is double-minded is like a wave tossed in the ocean and that person will receive nothing God wants us to receive the promises that he has spoken to us, but he also needs us to seize and grab hold and capture the hope that we have in Jesus that despite the mountain or the giant that we're facing in our life, we won't waver in our faith, but we will stand firm in the word that God has spoken into our lives. Let's not give up on the prayers that we have spoken unto God. Let's not make it easy on the enemy to give up on our miracles, to give up on our breakthroughs, on our families, that God has wants us to prosper. How many here in this place been praying to God and asking God to answer a prayer? How many of us been asking for a miracle? How many of us been asking for a breakthrough? How many of us been asking for God to get their families closer to the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Then I'm here to tell you tonight that you need to grab hold of the hope and the expectation that you have in Jesus. And no matter what comes your way, you need to fix your eyes on the altar and the pioneer of our faith. And you need to stand firm because God is about to answer your prayers. God is about to give you the miracle. God is about to bring you to your breakthrough. But you got to hold on to the spoken word of God don't let the enemy discourage you from obtaining the promised word of God if you have your Bibles really quick go to same same book Hebrews 10 but we're going to go to 35 and 36 watch what it says here therefore do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. Hallelujah. Someone says, my confident hope has great reward. Come on, someone say that. My hope has reward. There we go. Let's, let's, let's confess that tonight. Watch this. For, your, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Hallelujah. That after you have done the will of God, not my will, but the will of God, hallelujah. But look what he says. He says, don't cast away your confidence. How many of us here know what the word cast away means in the Greek? It means to make no effect. 
to render powerless. When we cast away our confidence, our faith, our hope that we have in Jesus, we make our life of no power or effect. And we give the enemy an open door to distract us from the promises that God has spoken to our families. Asunen. When we hold on the, the bond of our trust and confidence in God's word, there is great reward. See, you know what makes the Bible so amazing? Is because it never contradicts itself. It never fails you. It never returns back void. Amen, pastor? Amen. So watch this. So many of us here today, we ask ourselves, if God never fails, then how can my hope remain in him? Because the Bible says that no matter what you go through, the hope that you have in Jesus will never disappoint you. So how can the hope we have in Christ never disappoint us when we face disappointments every day? How many of us here ever faced a disappointment, a discouragement, something in your life where you prayed for and you felt like it didn't come to pass, you felt like it didn't happen, you felt discouraged, something didn't work out. So how can the hope that we have in God not disappoint us if we face disappointments? You ready? Remember the word means expectation. So when the expectation that we have is in Christ and not in the things of the world, that no matter what happens here on earth, the hope that we have in Jesus, the expectation that we have in Jesus will never disappoint us because the reward that we are all striving for is not the reward here on earth, but it's the reward in heaven of everlasting life. So therefore, whatever you face on here on earth, the hope you have in Jesus will never disappoint you because our expectation is for the kingdom of God. The expectation that we have is for everlasting life. It's for the crown of glory, the reward that Jesus has awaiting for us when we enter the kingdom of God. That he, we would hear those words, pastor, you said them. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Come into your everlasting glory. That's what we're expecting. So how many of us here know what the Bible says? Watch this. The Bible says that the sorrows that you may face or the sufferings that you may face here on earth will never outweigh the glory that's going to be revealed to you later on. So no matter what you face here, know that the sufferings here on earth will never outweigh the glory that's going to be revealed to you when you enter your father's house. Let's stand on some promises tonight. Who wants to hear the promises that God has for them tonight? Preach it, Pastor. Amen. Amen. How many of us know here tonight that we have a promised purpose? There's so many Christians walking around in life. And they're asking themselves, what is my purpose? Do I have a purpose? Is there a will for my life? Is there something that God has in store for me? Or am I just here to be here? Well, how many of us here know tonight that God has a promised purpose for your life? And he declares it in Ephesians 2, chapter 10. If you have your Bibles, go there with me. And a lot of people, they take this scripture out of context because they don't understand it. But I'm going to give you the understanding of this verse. That way you know what it means. Watch this. It's so beautiful. For we are the work, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God is telling his people that before you was even born. I laid down the foundations of this earth and I have a plan for you. 
I have a plan and purpose for your life. But how many of us here know today we have a decision to either walk in the plan or walk in our own plan. See, here's, here's where we need to understand. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So these are God's thoughts for you. This is God's mind. This is God's plan. This is God's gundo for ki familia. This is God's love for his people that he will prosper you and that he will bless you and that he will give you hope and a future to succeed and to prosper in everything you do. But how many of us here know tonight that we need to make a decision to walk in the plan that God has laid out for us? The plan that God has laid out it's for the believer that confesses Christ. And when you confess Christ, you begin your journey on the plan that God has for you. Watch this. The word workmanship. You ready? The word workmanship in Greek comes from the word poem or poetry. So let's, let's reread this for a moment. You are his poetry. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared for you to walk. That you should walk in them. So that means this, when you give your life to Jesus and you accept the most beautiful gift ever offered by the kingdom of heaven, which is everlasting life, the gift of grace, you come into the plan and purpose that God has for you and now your life becomes the poetry of God's heart. Your life becomes God's very own poem. How many of us here know a poem is written out of love? So your story is written out of the love of God. And when you step into it, you're going to walk in the purpose of God's love for your life. And you know what? If you never stand behind this pulpit and preach, if you never sit up there and, and worship the Lord on choir, but if all you do is come and sit in His pews, as long as you lift your hands and worship the living God, you have fulfilled your purpose because the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Your purpose is to worship God. You was created to worship God. As children of God, we need to know and understand that God has a divine will and purpose for our lives and our families to serve him and worship his, him in our daily walk. To reveal the glory of God through our life. But the enemy wants you to believe his lies. That you have no hope. You have no future. And to live a life of defeat and discouragement. To keep you from fulfilling your God-giving purpose and gifts. Someone in this place needs to hear this tonight. God is about to do a work inside your life. Like you've never known before. But you got to hold on to the faith and the hope that you have in Jesus. You got to keep praying, hallelujah. You got to keep believing, hallelujah. You got to keep worshiping, hallelujah. You got to keep praising God. Because your breakthrough is about to happen if you just hold on. Promised purpose. Few more. How much time do I have, Pastor? Am I okay? Okay. Amen. I hope so. He's going to kick me out if I don't. <laughs> How many of us tonight that we, we know we have a promised life of power? See, there's so many Christians walking around powerless. Thinking the enemy can defeat them because they have no power. But watch what the Bible says. See, we always got to stand on the Bible. Because the word of God is infallible. The word of God is perfect. The word of God never returns void. The promise giver is, is faithful to fulfill the promises. 
How many of us here know tonight that God has never broken a promise? There's over 2,500 prophecies in the Bible, and every one to date has been fulfilled exactly as it was written. That's pretty exciting. That's something I could depend on. It's tried and true like fine silver. Amen? Promised life of power. Watch this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The spirit of fear does not come from God. How many of us today know that the, 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 the fear is a spirit? It's a spirit that attacks the believer's mind to lose faith and hope in the promises of God that has been spoken to them to get you to give up, throw in the towel, walk away on the promises that God has for you. How many of us here know tonight, I'm going to bless you, you got to listen to this, listen carefully. How many of you know that fear has a fear? Have you ever thought about that? Fear has a fear. And what is this fear that the spirit of fear fears the most? You ready? You not believing in him. Because the day you stop believing in the fear of failure, the fear of not having, the fear of, of, of dying, the fear of getting sick, the fear of, of failing, the fear of making a mistake, the fear of going forward, the fear of preaching, the fear of worshiping, the fear of raising your hands, the fear of coming to the altar and bowing your head to the King of Kings is the day that you live a life of promised power. Because you cut off the source of fear. Because fear craves you believing in him. But how many of us here know that when you starve something, it dies? So when we starve the flesh, when we starve fear, then it shrivels up and dies and it runs away. And that's when you start living a life of promised power. Because the Bible says, greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. And my grace is sufficient for you. And in your weakness, my strength will be made perfect. So I will boast in my weakness that the power of God will rest upon me. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. Have your way in this place, like an Jesus. Two more scriptures. Promised abundant life. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes not, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come, Penelo Cristo, that they may have a life and that they may have it more abundantly. The promise, Kaijamino Cristo, right here, it's his promise, red letters, spoken from the very mouth of Jesus Christ. I think someone told, the thief, who is the thief? The thief is the false prophet. The thief is the false teacher. The thief is the false believer, the false Christian that comes to discourage you and to give you a false doctrine, a false gospel to take you out of the knowledge of the living God and to get you to believe something that is not true. That's the thief. A lot of people think the thief is the devil. No, the thief is the false teacher that the enemy works through to deceive his people to get them to live a life of fear if they don't do something. Mm. But take some more to Jesus. Jesus said that I have come to give life and life more abundantly. 
He promised us that his life will exceed our understanding because he knows that our life is not here on earth. Our life's in heaven. So therefore, no matter what we face here on earth, Dixo Pinjao Paul, Philippians 4, he says this. I learned how to be content having a lot and having a little. Having a full stomach and having an empty stomach. Having everything and having nothing. I have learned the secret of this. There's a secret. It's almost all. I can do all things to Christ Jesus who gives me strength. He realized where his power comes from. He See, Paul understood that no matter what he faces here on earth, his power don't come from earth. It comes from above, from God himself, through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. See, Jesus said, when the disciples asked him, Teacher, do you, do you want something to eat? He was talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. I have food you know nothing about. You know why? See, Jesus didn't survive off of physical food. He survived off spiritual food. And that's the secret. And that's what Paul is telling us here. We got to stop depending on the physical. We got to stop depending on the things of the world. We got to stop depending on the things that make our flesh happy. And we got to start depending on the word of God. Very good, pastor. Because his word will feed our soul that we will thrive and we will grow and we will succeed in the things of God so you have a promised abundant life when you know the spoken word of God and his promises to our life and for our life it makes it a lot harder to believe the enemy's lies because a lie is, when a lie is exposed, hold on, let me read this right, I'm sorry. To believe the enemy's lies because a lie is exposed when you know the truth. And once you know the truth, you'll never fall for the lie, right? So watch this. When the truth of God's word is revealed in your life, then no matter what the enemy tells you, you're not going to fall for it because you're going to stand on the truth and the truth will set you free and the truth will guide you and the truth will bless you because Jesus is the truth. And his promises stand firm for his people. Hallelujah. Let's go on. If you have your Bibles, last scripture. Psalm 16 Verse 11. Psalm 1611. Promised joy. How many of us are walking around with no joy? How many of us are walking around trying to find our joy through a new watch, a new phone? A new car, a new house, a new boat, a new life. But it seems like no matter how hard we try, we can never find true joy. You know why? Because the things here on earth will only make you happy for a moment. Because the Bible says that the things of this earth will pass away. They will perish. But look what God says. God says in the book of Psalms 16, verse 11, it says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God is promising his people true joy. And there's only one place to find true joy. There's only one place to find the strength of the living God. There's only one place, hallelujah, to find the glory of God. There's only one place to find the peace of God. You know where it's at? The Bible just said it. In his presence. 
in his presence there is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore when you remain in the presence of the almighty God then you will remain and obtain the promises of the living God the promise of power the promise of purpose the promise of abundant life and the promise of true joy how many of us here tonight want the promises of God if you want the promises of God I want everyone to stand to your feet in this place stand to your feet in this place and begin to worship God listen to me tonight the Bible said something it says do not cast away your confidence too many of us in this place have been making of no effect the faith that we have in God. Too many of us have been living a life that we are casting off our faith. We're casting off our confidence. We're casting off our hope that we have in Jesus. But tonight's the breakthrough. Tonight's the time. Listen to me. Pastor told me something when I called him. He said, nothing's by accident. He said, you're here for a reason. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal that to him. Because it takes a lot of faith to allow a man you have never met in your life to stand behind your pulpit that you've been preaching on for over 30 years and say, come and bring the word for the glory of God. That takes faith because the pastor knew that God had a word for his people. God had a word to bless you, to prosper you, to give you the breakthrough that you need. Now it's your turn to stand in your faith. It's your time to stand on the promises of God. It's your time to stand on the hope that you have in Jesus and declare the praises of the almighty God and say, no matter no matter what I face, no matter what mountain that I may be coming to, no matter what giant might be trying to knock me down, I'm going to hold on to the promises of the living God. I'm going to hold on to the word, to my faith, to my hope, my expectation. I'm not going to give up on the prayer for my family. I'm not going to give up on my miracle. I'm not going give up on my breakthrough I'm gonna believe that God is gonna rescue my life who wants that tonight listen it takes faith hallelujah it doesn't take the kind of faith that you stand around and do nothing it takes the faith that you have action see pastor could have had faith but if it didn't put action behind the faith, I wouldn't be here preaching to you right now. You got to put action to your faith. And there's only one place to find the promises of God. You ready? It's right here at the altar. It's right here at the altar. If you want your promises, if you want your breakthrough, if you want answered prayers, hallelujah, if you want to see the glory of the living God, you got to come to the altar in the presence of God and begin to worship Him and to begin to hold on to the Word of God and say, Lord, I'm standing on your Word. I'm standing on your Word.